the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Life is and can certainly be very, very complicated. I'd be hard pressed to think of a more complicated moment than took place exactly a hundred years ago. When those bells toll, I invite you to go back 100 years. Picture that moment. How full a moment that might have been. As complicated as those events, the assassination that led to the war to end all wars, all of the events that happened afterward leading up to that moment 100 years ago were more than just complicated. They tore apart lives. They created friendships and, uh, and bonds where people went through something they never expected to go through. And they also created animus among people who were perfect strangers. What was it like? What was it like being in the trenches, staring across the barrel of a gun at somebody you've never met, a story you've never heard, a life that you don't even have a glimpse into and being told they're the enemy? The only difference being where you were born, who your commanding officer is. Imagine having to put aside any concern for uh, who they may have left at home as you think about and try to put out of your head who you've left at home. Think about that moment knowing the war is winding down. Knowing at any moment the whistle might blow, but in this moment you're still on those battle lines especially the Germans, as many of them were aware that uh, their country was negotiating and, and was getting hung up on the details while their brothers were falling left and right beside them, while many walked off uh, the fields because they knew the war was over, but not really. Imagine the last few casualties. Imagine when the whistle blew, and however subtly it blew, however the news was disseminated at 11 o'clock on November 11th, 1918, how everything froze. What did you see when you looked across those lines? Did you see a fellow human being? Were they still your enemy? Did you ever think that maybe that might be a person that I end up working beside or uh, that we might do commerce across our nations at some point or that they might return to their family and hug their children the same way you hope to do yours? Think about all the people that weren't on the battle lines. The folks wondering if that empty seat would eventually be filled. Those that knew it wouldn't. Those excitedly awaiting the return to normal. In World War I, the war to end all wars caused over 40 million deaths, and that's not including all of those affected by the Spanish flu uh, and the way that it was uh, incredibly exacerbated uh, by the conditions of war. How much hope was in the air? How much joy was left? It's one of those moments where the line is in the sand and you have to decide in some ways, how am I going to walk home from this? How am I going to look at my brother on my left, on my right, across those battle lines? How am I going to understand hope and abundance in a world where I have been through what I have been through? And when they went home, it was a dramatically different story. Some Americans went home to un Unprecedented, in a few years, unprecedented prosperity. They began to birth the, what is widely regarded as the greatest generation our country has known. And over the next several months, conditions of uh, surrender would be worked out even more tightly, uh, and the Treaty of Versailles would put in conditions that would hamper Germany for some time to come over what today would be $440 billion in reparations, and beyond that, a, a tremendous amount of shame. How did one soldier come back a hero who fought as valiantly and as hard and as loyally for the people they worked for 
as the one who went back with shame and economic hardship. How complicated is life? How complicated was that moment? And I hope the people that went home and hugged their children, kissed their wives, picked up working, and enjoyed the economic engines that were in some ways created by the war, took a moment to think about that person that could have easily been on the other side of a barrel that went home to the opposite. And most historians will agree that the conditions, the circumstances that ended that war precipitated the next. Life's complicated. Same people, made in the same image of God, same fabric to their being, worlds apart. It's a little known fact that uh, on Sunday, despite also being my birthday, it is the 215th, 215th anniversary of another important day in our history. 215 years ago, a country that essentially uh, was inhabited by people brought over to serve other people. A nation of slaves had the audacity to want to be free and to want to be their own nation, and they rose up and they fought against one of the greatest military uh, armies of all time, fought against Napoleon's armies, and won! And won. On November 18th, won the final and decisive battle to declare their independence and to become a free nation, the nation of Haiti. And because it absolutely shattered Napoleon's dream of dominating the Americas, he washed his hand of the whole region, gave America the deal of a lifetime, sold us half our country for half as much money as he billed the Haitians for the audacity to defeat them and to declare their independence. A debt of what today would be $40 billion, 10 times all of the economy of Haiti. And they didn't finish paying it off, even at a reduced rate till 1947, and are still dealing with ramifications today. People made in the exact same image, made of the same fiber, equally children of God, doubled the size of the United States, and lived in debt for 150 years. How do we live with those differences? And what does this have to do with the gospel? I invite you to think about our responsibility to the other and our connection to the other, and how fragile and complicated the life in between is. People were lauding themselves for their generosity. They came with their abundance, all that they had, and they dropped the big coins, the ones that made the big noise uh, when it hit the coffers. And as it shook, they hoped people took notice. They were generous. They were good. They gave because they had a ton. And then this woman, whose sin was saying goodbye to her loved one too early, not having a child. We know that she didn't have a child to take care of her because she wouldn't be in control of her own money in that particular time uh, if she did. Her son would be the person, or son-in-law would be the person uh, who is in charge of her purse. Drops the only two coins she has for anything that she depends on into the coffers, and it makes a hollow little twang that other people would hear and Think of how insignificant that was compared to their heavy coinage. And Jesus stops them. Jesus stops them in their tracks and says, that woman gets it. That woman gets the complexity of human life and that all of us are utterly dependent on God and God's abundance, not our own. The rest of us, for some reason, assume that our abundance is of our own getting, our own earning, not just one of those wrinkles or complications in history. And we give enough to clear our conscience. But she gave out of a dependence on that truth, an absolute dependence on that truth that God 
is good and abundant and loving and will take care of her and will use all of his children to do so. So are we a church that truly trusts in the abundance of God? Do we act like it? Do we give not enough to clear our conscience, but do we give like that widow who says, you know what? Those little complicating things that make life different, that make my life different than yours, are not much at all. But my plenty should be your enough. Or I give it all to you and trust. Life's complicated. When those bells ring, we'll be reminded exactly how complicated it is. But just think how easily you could have been on the other side of those lines. And how you might have easily, just as easily, been on the other side of the street in the ditch of the person that you drive by. Or that person with an empty cup wanting it to be filled with a few coins. And when you give, give with the sense that you trust wholeheartedly in God's abundance. And that you want to be God's abundance in the world. Amen.